Call of Duty is kind of like the Transformers of the gaming industry. Big, loud, and thoughtless, and with Josh Duhamel. Unlike Transformers, however, I don't think that Call of Duty has ever insulted my intelligence. World War II is a hard subject. It would have been easy to have had a service level story that didn't step on any toes, but I was happy that this year's Call of Duty goes places I didn't expect it to. It isn't afraid to tackle some really tough situations, and it does so with accuracy and respect. Well, it's not the most historically accurate game ever made, but I'm still so happy that we have a great World War II video game in this current console generation. Lieutenant! Tell them what we're all about. No mission too difficult. No sacrifice too great. I love isolated narratives within an established series. Sometimes it can feel like filler, but when done right, it can add great perspective to the franchise as a whole. Resident Evil 7 uses its narrative isolation to its advantage, the entire time the player asks themselves, how does this tie into the other games? There are hints and teases, but the player can only speculate until late game, when the lid is blown completely open. Not only is Resident Evil 7 a perfect entry point for newcomers, its final act is one big lore smorgasbord for longtime fans. Daddy's coming. We need to go. We need to go now! Shut up and listen if you want to stay alive. The most impressive part about The Lost Legacy isn't its graphics, nor is it its crazy set pieces. It's that it's an Uncharted game without Nathan Drake, and it handles it well. There are plenty of nods to Nate's adventures, but The Lost Legacy is a strictly buddy cop style adventure featuring series favorite Chloe, as well as Uncharted 4's Nadine. Their chemistry is surprisingly abundant, as their contrasting viewpoints can often lead them to discover they're not so different after all. Wow. Spectacular. No wonder the whole solar capital was ransacked. Their loss is our gain. Coming off the wildly successful comic line based on the first game, I was curious how Netherrealm would up the stakes for Injustice 2. Injustice 2 isn't afraid to change up some of the DC Universe lore, such as having the destruction of Krypton come at the hands of Brainiac. Brainiac himself does a great job of establishing himself as a viable threat, with the added instability from the third party that is Regime Superman. The story does a solid job balancing both off-world threats, as both a continuation of the established storyline, as well as something more contained. Justice League came out in theaters this year, but Injustice 2 is a fantastic gaming alternative, with probably even better. There are two sides to the Wolfenstein 2 coin, and they're both pretty dark. On one hand, there's BJ's mentally and physically abusive father. On the other, the dystopian future of Nazi supremacy. Despite the heavy-handedness, Wolfenstein 2 manages to carve out its own breed of excessively violent black comedy. This game is the most unabashedly weird game to come out in 2017, and it's the same year that Yakuza 0, Nier Automata, and Persona 5 came out. It's filled with countless moments that had me laughing out loud, shocked to my core, and just plain amazed. I got kids on the way, and I'll be damned if I'm gonna raise them in a world run by these Nazi assholes. You take freedom away from the American people, you're playing with fire. And I intend to pour some gasoline. Rebellion is the central theme of Persona 5, and it's made apparent in all its facets. This game has attitude. Persona 5 has something to say. This game has beef with the way things are, and it isn't afraid to push some buttons to address that. Teen suicide, drug dealing, extreme politics, all the way to organized religion. Persona 5 isn't afraid to push the envelope for more mature storytelling, and despite its anime-esque over-the-topness, it never feels too ham-fisted. Stick it to those adults, Phantom Thieves. Fight the power. If The Last of Us is the Citizen Kane of gaming, then Hellblade is the Inception. Due to the nature of Senua's mental affliction, we as the audience never really trust what we're seeing, down to the very end. 
Despite the illusions and tricks, Hellblade features an intense story about overcoming mental illness and coming to terms with losing loved ones. The mood shifts from bleak and depressing to hopeful and uplifting. Hellblade is incredibly heavy and grounded, despite its roots in Norse mythology. However, discovering where those roots grew is a story in and of itself. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. Her world changed that day when the Northman took him from her. Senua knows that there is no going back to how things were, that there is nothing to go back to at all. Prequels can often feel like a waste of time. How do you worry the audience when they know that the protagonist comes out fine? Well, Yakuza 0 doesn't really try to waste time, it knows. What it does instead is provide incredibly important contextual moments that define what each character will become in the future. Goro Majima especially. Majima undergoes some of the greatest character growth I've ever witnessed in any story, making his conclusion both an exciting look at what the future holds, as well as an absolute heartbreaker. Yakuza 0 is a roller coaster for all of the great reasons a prequel should be. All of this, and it perfectly balances some of the craziest tonal shifts in all of gaming. Breath of the Wild kind of struggled to tell a cohesive story due to its open world nature. And I wouldn't say Horizon pulls it off perfectly, considering it's pretty all or nothing with its approach. It's hard taking your time with Horizon Zero Dawn because I found its story to be so gripping, I couldn't help but jump from story mission to story mission. It's not perfect as an open world story, but it's a fantastic story nonetheless. Post-apocalyptic stories feel like they've been done to death at this point, but Horizon's lore and situation as a post-post-apocalyptic story or make it stand out. It was an absolute pleasure dissecting both what happened in the past as well as what was happening in the present. Not only does it tell a contained story, Horizon also provides an extensive look into the world that once was. Then be ready for the darkness. And be careful of what you bring to light. Even if you do catch what you're after, how do you know it won't bite back? It's rare for any art form to offer a narrative so emotionally impactful that it actually changes the way I look at life, but Nier Automata goes to places most games wouldn't dare touch. In its second half, it almost feels like the game is actively trying to scar the player with overwhelmingly intense themes about the human condition and the point of life. Nier Automata may seem like it's just another quirky Japanese game at first, but it absolutely shatters that illusion later on. I had to take a really long break after finishing this one. There was so much, I still don't even really know what all went down. In the mood for an existential crisis? Try this one. They fight, steal, kill. This is humanity in its purest form. 